Hello world! In this video, I'm going to give you updates about the latest prototype of Zill 8-bit computer for both the motherboard and the video board. Let's get started! If you've watched my video about CPM, you've already seen the third prototype of Zill 8-bit computer. It has a size of 10 by 15 cm, making it more compact than the second prototype. This was possible thanks to the i 2 c EE Prom and the two PLDs, which replaced all the TTL logic chips. But this was six months ago. A lot of things have changed since. And here it is. This is the fourth prototype, and also the one that I consider being a release candidate, in the sense that it's almost a final version. It has exactly the same size as the former prototype, 10 by 15 centimeters, while having more features. Again, this was possible thanks to the Z80 CPU and Z80 PIO, as they are now using PLCC packages, which is more compact while still being able to be pulled in and out of its socket. About the new features, as described in the video about real-time clock, the motherboard now contains an RTC chip with its button battery socket. This will let the system be aware of the time. The battery socket, which can accommodate a CR2032 or a CR2025 battery, takes quite a lot of space, honestly. But after comparing it with the CR1616, CR1220, LR44, I finally decided that the 2032 was the best choice for me. It's not that much bigger than the CR1616, for example, but it has a much better capacity, as in theory, it should let us keep the date safe for about 33 years, against eight years for the CR1616. The MMU presented previously is now fully functional. We have four virtual pages of 16 kilobytes, which can be configured to any of the four megabytes physical address space. There's 22 bits of address can be found on the cartridge port or extension port so that anyone can map devices on physical memory. A major improvement is the addition of an 8-bit buffer. This will let us read back the MMU configuration from the software. Thanks to this, unmapping and remapping pages is much easier. Regarding the logic glue, the former two programmable logic devices, or PLDs, were replaced by a single one. This not only simplifies the board, but it also reduces the power consumption and the number of chips to pre-program. Talking about the chips to program, the most important one is the read-only memory, or ROM. In my case, I'm using a NOR flash of 256 kilobytes. This one is also in a PLCC package with a socket to reduce the space usage. One can argue that this is less convenient than using a deep socket or a ZIF socket, and this is true. But, as I just said, this is a NOR flash and not a PROM, EEPROM or EEPROM, which means it's possible to flash it directly from the Z80 without the need of an external flasher and so without taking it out. There are other smaller but important changes, such as the USB port, which is now a Type-C one, and also the system port and user port have been merged into a single one, where we can find the GPIOs, the I2C and the UART. I also added an internal I2C bus connector. Several bugs from the former prototype have been fixed. For example, the reset circuit has been stabilized, generating a clean reset signal instead of the former wibbly-wobbly signal. The same goes for the PS2 keyboard protocol detector. Uh, it used to notify the CPU too early when a key was pressed. Of course, some things haven't changed, like the video card connector, the 10 MHz crystal oscillator, the fuse, the PS2 connector, etc, etc. To sum up, on the motherboard we have many new features, such as the RTC, PLCC package with sockets for the CPU, the PIO, and the flash. We also have a fully working MMU, which gives us 4 MB of physical address space. Now let's take a closer look at the video card connector. In the previous videos, I was using a custom board based on an Altera FPGA. It was my first working custom prototype. It was made to work with the former Zill 8-bit computer. Remember, at first, that board did not have any MMU. It had a bank switching system, where the FPGA was mapped in write only in the first half of the memory. The pinout of the connector on that board reflects it. There are only the CPU 16 bits of address. However, the newest prototype has 22 bits of address, as we just saw. This is why I had to make an adapter to connect this FPGA board to the current prototype. This was temporary, of course, as I stated in my video about 8-bit graphics. Temporary until I make this, the second prototype of Zill 8-bit video card. 
based on the latest ECP5 FPGA, which has twice more LUTs and twice more internal RAM, it's also smaller than the Ultra FPGA. It was possible to reduce even more the size of the PCB. This prototype has an edge connector matching the one on the motherboard, so it has access to all the 22 bits of address. This means that now we can map the video memory anywhere on the virtual address space. The new FPGA is a game changer for the software, not only because we can now read the video memory, but also because the amount of RAM and LUTs lets us have more resolutions, more data, including more tiles, more sprites, and a lot more features, like a micro SD card interface and more sound channels. Before wrapping up this video, let me show you the current result. I ported most of the very log code that I wrote for the Altera FPGA to the lattice one. I wrote a small program that tests the text mode in 640x480. So, it maps the video RAM, writes a small paragraph to the display. Finally, it tests whether we can read the VRAM and write it back directly to the VRAM again, without going through any RAM buffer. And this will be very handy for scrolling, for example. As you can see, it works perfectly. That's promising for the future. So that's it for this video. I hope you enjoyed it. As usual, leave a comment if you have any suggestion or question and see you next time.